I'm Susanna Island. I'm a photojournalist and documentary photographer based in London with a a brief stint in India in the middle. I've been practicing for about 16 years, focusing mainly on press photography, um, but I enjoy particularly doing social and humanitarian issues. So I first thought of becoming a a photographer when uh, when I was 16, I saw a, a photograph in the Times newspaper from Tom Stoddart and it was, um, it was a man stealing maize from, uh, from a starving child in the Sudanese famine. And I was, it was such an amazing picture. I was inspired so much by the power of photography through that one image and its, its potential to affect change that I decided I wanted to be a press photographer after that. So I moved to India in 2014 uh, to try and pursue longer term documentary projects. And City of Widows came about because uh, National Public Radio approached me, which is NPR in in America, to cover a story about the widows in a city called Vrindavan. Basically, it's it's known as City of Widows because um, a lot of widows tend to gravitate there and then live in ashrams, and that they're kind of segregated from society, a lot of them. So it was a fascinating story, and it was also coincide with Holy Festival, which, um, if anyone knows India, is the Festival of Colours, which uh, can get quite... um, quite vibrant, so I mean obviously for pictures, but it's a, it's a story of emancipation and, and women who traditionally have been marginalised by society um, and ignored, um, wanting to take back control by celebrating a festival which traditionally they've been barred from. Internationally and within the UK, photojournalism and documentary photography has a real diversity problem. So um, it's it's estimated that roughly 85% of photojournalists are men and most of them are white. (laughs) So um, personally, I think that in order to truly represent the communities that we we cover, then we need more diversity behind the lens as as well as in front of it. So that's why I'm part of Women Photograph, which is a platform to elevate the voices of women. And it is changing slowly, it feels like. Uh, Not quite fast enough for... (laughs) But for me personally, but um, but it feels like uh, change is happening. Change has to come from the top down, not grassroots level change. It has to come from the picture editors have to change the way that they commission and, and be more diverse in, in their hiring practices. As a result, this is the first women photograph book that's come out and it's, it's 100 photographers globally, worldwide, who have each contributed one photograph from their careers. And it's a book entirely of women photographers and photojournalists, which um, in an industry which is only 15% women is is an important step, we feel, to to try and redress the gender balance and try and achieve gender parity eventually. There are so many really good photographers in there as well. I feel very honoured to be among such talented photojournalists. So I'm part of the Women Photograph uh, London branch, and then there's also branches in Berlin and all over the world, basically. Um, And we're trying to grow as much as possible and and empower female photographers to to a community of of women who have probably all all faced sexism within their careers and, and, and it's a support system as much as it is anything else. Perseverance is very important, especially in an industry where budgets have shrunk a lot. Um, So... Any advice that I would give would be to don't give up when, when you get rejected when in the first hurdle. Everyone encounters rejection at some stage. When I first got my job at the Times, which was a young photographer uh, competition, the first year I got rejected, so, uh, so I applied again the second year and then got in the second year. But it was worth it in the end. It's just uh, you have to have confidence in your own abilities and... Um, Try and learn as much as you possibly can from, from others. Trying to get work experience with as many agencies and newspapers as possible, I think that's, that's definitely a key one. And building up your portfolio essentially by covering as much variety as you can if you want to be a photojournalist. Shooting at night and uh, diff- different scenarios, portraits, features, sport. Doing as much work experience as possible and, and photographing the communities around you. I mean, everyone's got um, their own take on, on things and, and if you have access to something that you're already a part of then you're already two steps ahead than a photographer from the outside who, who wouldn't know it as well um, that's, that's what I would suggest uh, photograph your own, your own community first and then move outwards